Hey there, and welcome to the Fierce Authenticity Podcast, where I teach you how to decolonize your mind, break free from supremacy's internalized patriarchal conditioning, and have amazing relationships. It doesn't have to be one or the other, friend. You can have both. And my signature framework, Fierce Authenticity, shows you how. I'm your hostess, Sharani M. Fatak, and now let's get to it. Hello, hello, and welcome back to the podcast where we are entering the most wonderful time of the year. Ha <laughs> ha, boundary setting time. In particular, boundary setting around holidays time. It is that time of year, friend. It is mid November, Thanksgiving. Christmas, Hanukkah, New Year's, Kwanzaa, all of it is around the corner. And this is the time where it's your opportunity to practice your boundaries like a boundaries ninja. And so we are kicking off the holiday season with an episode on boundaries, the holiday edition. Now, what you're going to hear today is a rebroadcast of the original holiday series, which aired in season three. And now I want you to know, friend, when you hear me reference some of the other episodes, you are not missing out. They are coming up. It just felt really important this year for us to start with boundaries. So with that, we are going to go straight into the episode. I truly hope you enjoy. And here is to you setting and enforcing boundaries like a ninja this holiday season. Today we're talking about boundaries, the holiday edition, and we are going to just get right into it. I'm going to start off by saying that if you have been following along the podcast for a while, then you'll know I did an episode, season two, episode 13, called The Truth About Boundaries. And I do encourage you to go back and listen to that one, because in that episode, I share with you that boundaries aren't made for other people. Boundaries are for you. One of the biggest misconceptions that we have and an area where we tend to trip and stumble and fall when it comes to boundaries is that we think that boundaries are for other people. And so we create these boundaries, we communicate them with other people, and then we get upset, pissed off, and resentful when they do not adhere to our boundaries and what we have set up. Guess what, sweetheart? If you are trying to set boundaries and hoping that other people will follow through with them and then getting resentful when they don't, do you know what you're doing? You are actually participating in supremacy culture's sneaky behavior of control. That is what you're doing. You are trying to control another person and how they engage with you. You're trying to tell another person who to be in order to be in relationship with you. And when you do that, You are putting yourself in a position of superiority, the other person in a position of inferiority. You are elevating yourself to the status of some holier-than-thou type, (laughs) and you are dehumanizing the person that you are in relationship with. Yeah, I'm just going to pause to let that one settle. Because that truth bomb came at you pretty big. (laughs) And uh, pretty all at once. We're not playing around in this series and we're not playing around in this episode either. 
And it's really important that you understand when you are creating boundaries because you want other people to adhere to them, then you have fallen into supremacy cultures, sneaky, sneaky, subtle, sly, cunning, baffling conditioning in order to keep you out of relationship with others and out of authentic relationships out of authentic communication and out of authentic connections really is what happens and it keeps you out of intimacy it keeps you out of intimacy with yourself and it also keeps you out of intimacy with others and so I need you to know that and understand that so that You can catch yourself when you fall into the pattern of creating boundaries for others because that is just another way that control and manipulation shows up. And control and manipulation in this context, and we'll talk about manipulation another day, but control and manipulation in this context are actually really, really unkind. And it's supremacy culture's conditioning. And what I want you to know, what I was reminded of recently in a conversation with a friend is that clear is kind. This is a conversation that she and I often have that clear is kind. It is kind for you to be clear with yourself about what your boundaries and your parameters are when you are considering how you're going to do the holidays. It's kind to be clear with yourself what you will and will not accept when it comes to this season. Even if that what you will and will not accept relates to what you will and will not accept from yourself. And it is also kind for you to very clearly communicate what it is that you need to others and then let go of any expectations or any outcomes because when you hold on to expectations and outcomes, you fall into the behavior of control is unkind. So remember that clear is kind, control is unkind especially when we are directing it outwards towards another person or another outcome or something outside of us. Because the reality is we are not God and we are not in control of other people, places, and things around us. We are not in control of how other people choose to show up. We're not in charge or in control of what Aunt Sally has to say or how Uncle Joe does things or how drunk someone gets at a party or if someone else is choosing to get behind the wheel after they've drank. That is not up to you. You have no control over someone else's behavior. And if you believe that you do, and if you attempt to control another's behavior and their terms of engagement with you, then you are actually being quite unkind. Now, let me back up and say, That does not mean you need to engage with people who are presenting in a way, who are showing up in a way that is not in alignment with what your boundaries are. So I'll give you a real concrete example. Let's say you're going to the holiday dinner and you know that Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe always show up, they always get shit-faced, and then there's always a battle, whether it be between them or between other family members who try to convince them not to drive home in that intoxicated state or whatever, okay? That's just an example that we're going to put out there. And let's say that your boundary is 
that you don't want to be around people that are drinking. Well, guess what? You can tell Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe, you know what, Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe, I don't want you to drink at the holiday dinner this year. Do you think you can do that? No, that's freaking controlling. What you can do, however, is be very clear with yourself that you don't want to be around that type of energy or that type of behavior, not because you're judging them, but as a way to protect your energy. So in doing so, what you get to do is you get to be kind with yourself and have that clear boundary that you don't want to be around them when they're drinking. And so guess what you get now? You get choices now in how you choose to engage, how you choose to respond, with whom you choose to engage with. Now there are all of these opportunities and choices that are available to you because you are not trying to control and manipulate someone else's behavior. And so a boundary that you can set for yourself And you can communicate that boundary like, hey, mom, I don't really want to be around Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe when they're drinking. You can absolutely set that boundary. And what you get to do is you get to show up to the dinner early. You get to leave the dinner early. You get to have the meal and then go into a different room where Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe are not. You get to drop by for a hello. Say your happy holidays and get your hugs and kisses and you get to take your plate to go. Or you could even completely come from a bucket that is so full And you could be in such a good spiritually, mentally, emotionally aligned and well place that you can actually go to that holiday dinner. You can check in with yourself and you can see, yeah, Aunt Sally, Uncle Joe, this is who they are. This is what they do. And I can love them from afar so that I can still have my holiday dinner with my family, of whom Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe are a part of, and I don't have to let their behavior impact me in a negative way. Hey friend, if you're enjoying what you're hearing and you want to get in on more amazing life-changing tips on how to show up as your most embodied and authentic self, and still have amazing relationships, then come on over and join me in my free email community. As a bonus, when you sign up during season four, you'll get the opportunity to join me live for these podcast recordings, just like we're doing here, where you'll have an opportunity to ask me questions and get coached live by me, all simply for being a part of the Fierce Authenticity community. Visit sharanimbatuk.com slash connect to sign up. Again, that's sharanimbatuk.com slash connect to sign up. The link is in the show notes, and I am excited to see you on the inside. And so that's just one of the examples of how you can use these boundaries that you learn about in fierce authenticity to authentically and fiercely communicate your truth because you have taken the time to get clear and be kind with yourself and others in your life in terms of what you are and are not okay with, not because you believe you're better than Aunt Sally or Uncle Joe, absolutely not, because that would be you falling into patterns of supremacy again. But what you are and are not okay with and what is and is not acceptable to you from you 
as a way to stay in alignment with your fierce truth, not as a way to manipulate and control. And another thing I want you to consider is that when you're focusing on an outward person, place, or situation, and when you get so obsessed about Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe's behavior, you can remind yourself that focusing outwardly on them is a really great way to avoid looking at and focusing on what's actually going on with you. This is one of supremacy's greatest distractions, greatest diversions, is to keep us distracted from looking at ourselves by constantly looking outwards and judging others. And, you know, there's psychological theories that will tell you that whatever you're seeing in others is actually a part of yourself that you're seeing in them. There's actually a quote that I love from the 12-step recovery community. If you spot it, you got it. And so if there is something about Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe's behavior that is just grating on you and getting on your nerves and feels like I absolutely cannot be at this holiday dinner if they're going to be there, well, guess what? Now you have an opportunity to grow in your knowledge and intimacy with yourself. You get to turn towards source. You get to turn towards self. You get to decide that you're going to look at what's happening in your experience rather than looking out at someone else. And when you can do that, you get to move through the world with an energy of compassion. Compassion for yourself. Compassion for Aunt Sally and Uncle Joe. Compassion for your mom. Compassion for everyone else. And I want to let you know that in the same conversation with this friend that I shared with you earlier, is it came to me that judgment and compassion can coexist. If you recall a few episodes ago, I shared one of our episodes was called The Both And. Because we live in such an either-or world, and new age, modern spirituality, I roll, uh, teaches us that we can only have judgment or we can only have compassion. And that if we have compassion, we can't be in judgment. Well, guess what? Both of those two things can coexist. You can still have judgment towards yourself, towards Aunt Sally, towards Uncle Joe. And you can still have compassion for every single person involved. And that is the beauty of these practices of fierce authenticity. They allow you to experience the rainbow, the rainbow spectrum of colors of when you allow yourself to experience the both and. Because absolutely, there's going to be a part of you that's in judgment. And absolutely, there's going to be another part of you who might be in compassion. And because each of these parts make up the whole, W-H-O-L-E, of who you are, both of those things can coexist. And one more thing that I want to share with you for Boundaries, the holiday edition, is that When you're engaging with boundaries in this way, and when you're being clear and kind, and when you're able to have the capacity to focus on what's happening in your own experience rather than looking outward at someone else's, and when you can hold the experience for both judgment and compassion at the same time and know that they can coexist, And when you're engaging in these practices of fierce authenticity, 
what gets to happen as you're creating your new legacy is you get to catch yourself before you create too much wreckage in your relationships, before you create too much damage and hurt and pain. And let's say you did cause some hurt. When you're engaging in all of these practices, you also know and understand how to engage in repair before it gets too out of control. So there you have it. Fierce authenticity, boundaries, the holiday edition. I would love to hear your feedback on what this episode brought up for you. What insights, ahas you had. I know that this time of year can also be really lonely and isolating for some of us. And so I invite you to send me a DM at Sharani M. Batuk on Instagram or connect with our newsletter community, which is at www.sharanimbatuk.com slash connect. Come on in and join community so that you can engage in these practices of fierce authenticity so that you can experience authentic connection, authentic communication, and authentic relationships. All of which are based in the intimacy that are the antidote to supremacy. I'll be back with you next week where we are talking about New Year, New You. I roll. Until then, have a wonderful week and we will speak again soon. I want to take a moment to honor the amazing team that helps make this podcast possible for you. Starting with our audio editor, Diego Velazquez, graphic designer and behind the scenes admin, Ana Olvina, transcript proofreader and editor, Vani Bata, show notes and blog posts by Bijana Sandich. Photography by Lauren at Radiance Studio. The musical track Tropical Summer Beach by Alex Make Music on Pixabay. My husband, my family, my community, my higher power. And last but not least, I want to thank you, my loyal listener and friend, so much for tuning in. Ways that you can further support the podcast are by rating and reviewing Fierce Authenticity on Apple, sharing it with everyone you know, screenshotting it, posting it on social media, and be sure to tag me at Sharani M. Batak when you do, and making a one-time or recurring financial contribution through the link in the show notes. And remember, be sure to sign up for my emails and check out my current services, offerings, and ways to work with me over at FierceAuthenticity.com. I am sending you so much love, friend, and I cannot wait until we are together again soon. Mm-hmm.